All right, how's everyone doing? I'm Rich Chalenza. Thanks for checking out the Rich Chalenza Show. WTF are you talking about? So today I want to call it, you're going to fuck up, learn to move on. I don't care who you are in your life, what you've done, uh, what family you were born into, what nationality you are, if you're a man, a woman, whatever the hell you are, you have to realize throughout your life, you're going to be fucking up. Now, I think what happens, especially with people that are middle-aged, they start regretting their past on all the things that they've done wrong. And I call them carrying anchors. And I talk about this on my previous podcast. You got to get rid of the anchors, cut the rope, and just sail out to the sea. You just have to move forward. But a lot of people get caught up with all the decisions they made in their past. And, uh, or they get caught up with what have people have done to them in their past. And they don't acknowledge a lot of times what they did to people in their past. They're only acknowledging what others did to them. Typical, you know, um, typical victim mentality to a certain point, right? But also people out there that don't think their shit does its thing, that are always, uh, giving people advice or thinking, um, all the decisions they always made or are making are always right or or I shouldn't say or are publicly like kind of displaying that or voicing that I think are full of shit. One of the reasons I was kind of I think one of those people, not extreme, but when I was younger making a lot of money, I always pointed out everybody's flaws and what they were doing wrong. And I remember one of my closest friends saying, Rich, we don't have the same life you have right now. We didn't have the same opportunities you had. And it kind of hit me between the ears. Is it the ears or the eyes? I don't even know. It hit me in the face. And he was absolutely right. You know, it's easy sometimes to become blinded by only your life and not recognizing what others are going through. Right? But if you have some compassion, uh, you really got to have a lot of patience to deal with people because the reality is it takes a lot of patience to deal with you. And I don't think a lot of people like to hear that. But re- back to, you know, if, if you're somebody that's beating themselves up, which I know tons of these people, holy shit, and maybe because I'm middle-aged now, and I'm, a, I'm around a lot of elders, and then I'm around a lot of people that are youthful as well. So I'm kind of in the middle. And on one side of my family, I'm actually the oldest out of all the grandchildren. And on the other side, I'm the youngest. So on one side of my father's family side, I'm the youngest cousin. So most of the, uh, my other cousins are between 60 and 75 years old. And then I have aunts, uncles, and everything in between. On the other side, I have a massive family. I have like 170 cousins. I kind of fall in the middle, but I'm the oldest boy grandson to my grandmother, and I'm the oldest boy great-grandson out of like 170 of us. So to say I'm around a lot of people or my family's huge, I wouldn't be surprised if we're one of the largest families in Chicago. Uh, I don't say that to brag. I'm just being honest about it, but... What I've noticed again over the years with men and women, with relationships, we could start even there. People that have either been in relationships for too long or miserable they stayed in the relationship. Or people that have gotten divorced um, either have remarried and actually are kind of happily being married a second time or are miserable uh, regarding their first marriage and then their second. And a lot of times people in their second marriage either get separated or divorced or just kind of stick it out because they don't want to be known for you know, getting divorced twice. But I did, I did once hear a funny statistic that more people get divorced a second time, I think, than a first. I don't want to screw that up. Um, I don't know if that's right or wrong, but I heard something like that. And what was interesting is when I was younger, I once heard a lot of people that got married a second time, they said, oh, I did it wrong the first time, so I had to go about it another time to make it right. But I noticed that a lot of people that were married in their second marriage weren't any happier than people that were married, you know, the first time. And this again, I'm not telling you to get married or divorced or any of those type of things. But what I am going to say regarding this podcast, regarding you fucking up or screwing up is we all, it's going to happen to everyone. I don't care if you own a company. I don't care if you're an employee. I don't care if you make minimum wage. I don't care if you're worth hundreds of millions of dollars. You're going to do and say things that you're going to probably regret. 
no one is perfect, right? And one of the reasons you can't be perfect is because your surroundings aren't perfect. So you're going to sometimes be put in certain situations and do certain things or act a certain way where maybe if you knew about the other information or other things regarding this subject, you wouldn't have acted that way. So a lot of times I'm not sticking up like for people's behavior that behave badly, but a lot of times we are pushed into certain situations, I think, that are, you know, really you get caught off guard. And then you may, I'm not saying have a temper tantrum, you may get, you know, physical with somebody, you may get verbal, you may say things that you regret. That's going to happen in your life, but you're going to have to understand you have to move on. You have to also understand, I think, people are going to lash out at you and do things to you that are going to really piss you off. And there are going to come times in your life where you probably either, you're going to have to forgive them and move on or just carry all the baggage and hatred you know, with you. That's going to happen to certain people, especially when you have family members or friends or colleagues that end up in a situation where, I'll just use for example, we had this happen. One of our closest friends got murdered. So when you have something like that happen to you, you never think it's going to happen. You know, you watch these specials on 2020, Dateline, Nightline, and you think, well, this isn't going to happen. But was interesting, it happened to uh, two different people that were friends of mine. One was a very close friend of mine that worked with us. She got murdered in our store. So the hatred that I had for the person that did that to her after seeing what her two small children and her father and her husband and her brothers all went through, it's really easy for people to say forgive and forget. But it's really, I don't even know if I could do that still to this point in time. I don't think I can. I'm just that type of person to be honest about it. It's not like I could just forgive that guy. I can't. And if I can't even imagine if that was my real sister, but I loved her and it was she's a wonderful person. And then on the another side of this, uh, one of my cousin's best friends, who was a, I was a good friend with too, he got murdered as well. And I've had other people get murdered. I'm not going to lie in things uh, or thrown in jail or uh, you know that I've known about or that got in fights with people that got uh, another friend of mine from high school got stabbed in the throat. The, the list goes on. And I'm not here to you know, brag about those things or anything like that. But again, sometimes you um, you got to look at life that it's so unexpected. And you never truly know what's going to happen from literally second to second, from minute to minute. I think we think we have a lot more control on our life than we really do. And of course, we can control a lot of aspects of our life. But we definitely, for the most part, can't control what others do to us all the time. And usually the ones that are going to fuck you are the ones that are closest to you. Because those are the ones that can get to you. It's not like strangers can. And uh, that's kind of obvious if anybody has any common sense. Um, But again, if you're having a problem, you know, with your decisions. And I go through this a lot. Because sometimes I think a lot of decisions I made led me to the life I had, which is actually a very nice life. Uh, But I also think a lot of decisions I made also set me back for long periods of time, a lot longer than I ever thought. So you kind of get caught saying, why did I do this? I could have probably ended up here, which is in a much even better position than I'm at now. But then again, I may have made a certain decision and it could have actually spiraled in another situation that I don't even know about, right? It's kind of like, if you're on the you know you're on the road and you decide one day to go left instead of right and you know you drive home safely if you would have went right a semi could have hit your car or hit somebody else and killed them but sometimes you don't even know that cuz you didn't go right you went left right and i think a lot of times you know it comes down to a lot a lot of people dwell so much on the hindsight of talking about things that says oh my god if if you know, if I only knew what I knew then, or wait, if I only knew now what I knew then, you know, time is wasted on the, or wait, um, what is that? I'm screwing these up. Um, something's wasted on the youth or something with the old. Basically, I'm trying to say is a lot of people that are older wish they knew what they knew when they were younger because they would have made all these different type of decisions. The truth was, if anybody knew all the different types of things that they do, they would have made different decisions, especially the wrong decisions. I mean, yeah, if you're a psychic, 
what the hell? But it's kind of really easy, you know, when you're 50, 60, 70, 80 years old to say, you know what, if I, if I would have known, you know, Google was going to be what it was, if I would have known, you know, uh, Apple would have made a comeback, I would have invested in stocks. If I would have known the real estate market in California would have been this. And if Florida, if I knew that, uh, you know, the, you know, this would have happened there and uh, the tech, you know, industry would have, I mean, no shit. If you're one of those people that goes around thinking that, which is fine, you can think any way you want, but be a little realistic. You, you know, it's one of those things too, is if you're in your life, right? And I talk about this to people. You got to kind of focus a little more on just being more specific, I think, a lot of times as we're getting older, regardless what age we are, if we kind of want to make better decisions. But a lot of people I noticed, and I do this too once in a while, we keep making the kind of a different decision, but it's not any better than the ones we made previously. A lot of times we know better, but we try to convince ourselves it's going to be better when we really know really deep down inside, it's a shitty, it's another shitty decision. It's another shitty idea. Or you know what's going to come out about this, but you neglect it. Or you allow yourself to get fooled. You know, you watch these, I don't, truthfully, I don't watch any commercials or I try to limit as many as I can. But if you watch these damn commercials, even, you know, on television, I don't care if it's news stations, I don't care if it's major networks, uh, I don't care if it's on cable, always trying to convince you of something um, regarding you being sick. Uh, You may feel, do you feel this way? You need medicine. And of course, if you are sick and you need things, I understand that. But I'm talking about people kind of programming you to kind of make decisions for you. You know, if a lot of times, I guess you could say, if you don't feel good, instead of taking a pill, maybe, maybe lose some weight. Common sense type things. If you're not feeling well, you know, you may want to start working out, right? If you're feeling shitty drinking a a six-pack or a 12-pack a night, I mean, common sense, you know, I once had, I don't want to say who it was, but I knew somebody was very obese. I mean, literally he came, two things happened. He once snapped our chair, which is fine. Another time he cracked a toilet. I'm not exaggerating because the way he sat on it, he was very obese. He was probably 450 pounds, maybe around there, 4 to 25, 450. And... I think he was not used to anybody talking to him, kind of being as blunt as I am. But he used to, you know, kind of talk about everybody, talk shit about people, and it just used to get on my nerves. And he was an elderly person, older, so I always, you know, took it with a grain of salt. And then he started to have major knee problems where he had to wear knee braces. And he was not that old because I was in my 20s. He's probably my age, 50, let's just say. And I get it, we're getting older and you have knee problems, but I told him, I finally had to say, do you think your knee problem is probably because of your weight? You know what I mean? He's like, absolutely not. My knee problem stemmed back in high school with football and then this happened and then this happened. Even after that conversation, I said, yeah, I understand all that. But don't you still think that all the weight that you're putting on your joints is affecting you? He could not get it through his head. I think this goes for a lot of people, including myself sometimes because I work out really hard. But I could tell when I get heavy, I get winded. And I know the answer to my problem. It's not age always. Sure, age is part of it. But the problem is I'm gaining weight. I'm eating a lot of pasta. I'm taking a lot of flights, for instance. I'm not doing enough cardio. These are, I'm just using for an example, but you could have things in your life that are just very simple. You may purchase things, for instance, if you're always broke and wondering why you're broke, regardless what age, look at your expenses. I mean, the truth is, it's right in front of you. If you're spending more money than you're making, you have a problem. And don't think you're going to always make more money in the future. The reality is you're going to probably make less or you may make more, I should say, but you're going to take on a lot more responsibilities, which in turn leads to less. So people don't look at it like that, especially young people. They're like, oh, wow, I'm making a really good living now. Let me go buy a house. Wonderful. Okay, let me get a better car. Like I used to do. Let's get two cars. Before you know it, let's move into a better house. Let's do this, 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 which is great. I'm not saying anything against it. But the, the reality is if the bottom falls out or you, you're wondering why you live a certain, like a lot of, I have friends that a lot of them make a lot of money and they still live very stressful lives. And one of them even confronted me regarding that. And he even said, hey man, I make too much money to be 
under this much stress. And he always says, you deal with stress like it's no big deal. But the reality is I stopped doing a lot of things. You know, I kind of lived the life he led. He leads the life I led when I was younger that I learned from. He's learning it now in middle aged, which is again, having, you know, it's wonderful to have a big, beautiful homes with pools, uh, you know, new cars, car payments, just like I described, all these other things that keep piling on. And you know what? You do reach a point if you work for someone or if you, even if you have your own company for the most part, a lot of times things flatline, right? They don't always keep growing, you know, and it's wonderful if it does. And sometimes we have unrealistic expectations of things growing. Even if we own a company, I've been there with my father, just because, you know, you have this X amount of clients, then the next, you know, year you're going to have this many, you're going to have this many, and you see this on Shark Tank, you're worth this, and then it's going to grow. They don't talk about all the times when something happens that either, you know, someone steals from you and takes some of your accounts, or the economy changes, or something else comes into play. That, you know, it could be many, the stock market, many other things could come into play to stop your growth, or you know, really start to hurt your growth. They don't talk about that. So what I would recommend for anybody is to, just in this podcast, I'm on a rant here for some weird reason, um, regarding fucking up, is try to prevent the fuck ups before they happen, but be very blunt about that. And I think when we especially have a partner, a wife, uh, a fiance or something, sometimes we both kind of get caught up, I think, or when you're with somebody, you both get caught up in the emotional side of things. It's kind of like saying, I, um, you know, I don't need a new car, but I'm just going to go out, look and shop kind of type thing. You know, if you find something you like, you're going to most likely, you know, like it and want to take it home with you and get it. Don't even go that route. Tell them, no, I don't want another car payment if you don't have one, or I don't want a higher car payment. Or maybe you want to get a car and you could go buy a car that's vintage if you could take care of it instead of buying a car that's losing its value constantly. You're like, hey, I'm going to buy a vintage car that after the last 10 years I studied it, it's increasing in value, not decreasing. And I'm just using this for an example because I'm with my dad and he does vintage cars and things of that nature. But I had to get some one of their, please prevent a lot of your, you could prevent a lot of your screw ups. I'm telling you right now, I see a lot of people, because I live in Orlando, Florida, which is basically the tourist capital of the world. And I even see people locally that spend too much money on doing a lot of tourist oriented things and wondering why they're kind of broke. And that could be for becoming season ticket holders at Disney, Universal, SeaWorld. And I'm not telling anybody because I'm a part of that. But I realized over the years, it's not just getting the tickets, it's how much money you're spending in the parks. They don't look at that, right? They only see a budget and saying, hey, to get a, you know, Disney tickets for me and my family, there's only four of us, it cost us $2,500, three grand. When I get my bonus, I do that. Wonderful. Then they don't realize how many times they're going to Disney, Ep- Epcot, Hollywood Studios, uh, you know, Animal Kingdom, whatever, the Blizzard Beach, Typhoon, whatever they keep going, they keep going. At the end of the year, they spent $15,000, $20,000. And I'm not exaggerating. Every time you go, you know, you eat, you buy something, uh, you have a few drinks. Before you know it, it's 200, 300 a pop every time you go. Like I said, and before you know it, and then people come to town, you go with them. Uh, you may even do a little mini vacation there, even get a hotel. And I live this so I know it. And I'm just using these things for examples is just really look down the road too. Because I think, especially as we get older, we kind of, in one place where, very, where we know the mistakes we made, but sometimes we're, we're sharp, but we're gullible. Because I also think people can kind of fool us into doing certain things that we know, again, are wrong or that we can't afford or getting involved helping others where we're not in a position to help them. And that can go for our kids. Maybe it could go for your grandkids. It could go for friends. It could be whatever. It could be, you know, starting a business with a friend or a colleague or whatever, or just doing certain things. Just make sure you kind of take your time. Now, if the right time, you know, I'm not telling you to, you know, lay back and not do anything by any means. If the timing's right, do it. But I think sometimes when it comes to making decisions, sometimes, especially big decisions, sometimes, you know, the longer you wait, the more you kind of figure things out. 
And that doesn't mean wait months or years. I'm not trying to say that if you need to find a home or get a car or whatever, buy a business. I'm not telling you to stall. But I am telling you, do not jump to conclusions. Because, and I've discussed this before, one bad decision can make your life miserable. For the, for, it could lead for the rest of your life. It could be five years. It could be 10 years. Who knows what it could be? But a lot of times, as you know, people jump to conclusions or make decisions very quickly without truly knowing what they're doing. They're kind of convinced that it's the best for them at that point in time when it isn't. So anyways, I'm going to leave it at that. But just remember, I mean, really, that's what it all comes down to, I think, is just making sure you protect yourself and others and realize you are going to make mistakes. There's there's no getting around that. I don't care, like I said, if you're poor, if you're a billionaire. Things are going to happen that are out of your control. You may not even realize you're doing things um, that are wrong at the time you're doing them. But that's just life, right? So I'm just saying, just try to prevent that if you can. And uh, I'm going to wrap it up there. If you get a chance, check out my YouTube channel. Uh, you could get all that from uh, Rich Chalenza. I got a website too, same name. I'm on LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And uh, yeah, please reach out. This was kind of a tyrant. I felt like a tyrant <laughs> rant. But I just think people really have to understand. Uh, and the last thing I wanted to say is, again, you know, like I said earlier, have patience for, uh, patience for others. But if you have kids, um, be patient with them. A lot of times I think we, and I've discussed this in my previous podcast, they're going to make a lot of mistakes. And I know a lot of times we want them to prevent making mistakes and we jump on them and we want to protect them, which is wonderful. But sometimes you can only prevent so much. And a lot of times, by the way, the youth learn is by making mistakes because if everything kept going right for them or they, it, you can't become somebody who becomes an enabler, I think, to our children, even though that's a podcast that I do want to do in the future. But just limit their mistakes, but understand they need to make certain mistakes so that they don't do it again. But if you keep kind of protecting them or always making sure that they're always kind of not always making the right decision, but always making decisions for them, how do you expect them to kind of become strong adults and parents themselves? So... All right, I'm going to wrap it up there. Take care, and if you're traveling, safe travels.